There are so many paths in dentistry. How do you know which is right for you? Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Effie Oanidu. And I'm Dr. Arnell Wright. And this is Dental Soundbites. Today, it's all about the different career paths in dentistry. From the American Dental Association, this is Dental Soundbites, created for dentists by dentists. Ready? Let's dive right into real talk on dentistry's daily wins and sticky situations. question for our listeners. How did you decide which direction you wanted your dental career to take? And if you're still in dental school, where can you turn to get a comprehensive picture of your options? Oh, we've got something for you. That's right, we do. There are so many options. In this episode and in the next one, we will explore some of the many possible dental career paths. Today, we are hearing from dentists in federally qualified health centers, in academia, hospital, and military hospital settings. I want to welcome our guest today, Dr. Tanya Sue Maestas. You have a remarkable story as a dentist. You have been making an impact in the profession and winning the ADA 10 Under 10 Award last year. Woohoo! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Please tell us about yourself and how you decided your career path. Well, hello, hello, everyone. Thank you all for having me. I'm super excited to be here and I'm excited to talk about this important topic. And I think it's important for our listeners to know that no matter what stage of career that you might be in, if a change is in your future, it's never too late. I love that. So a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in El Paso, Texas. I went to school in Houston, graduated in 2018, did an AGD in 2019 and made my way back to the borderline hometown community of El Paso. I now currently work at an FQHC, about 45 Five minutes outside of the city. And I'm also a part-time faculty member at the Woody L. Hunt School of Dental Medicine in El Paso. Nice. Well, welcome, welcome. And you both make me feel so old. Oh, no, no. Like no. literally you were, you graduated in 2018. Oh, dear God. <laughs> but anyway. You're seasoned. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You have lots of wisdom to share with us. We're here to oh, learn from you. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely true. <laughs> Before we ask you more about FQHC, I would like to do something a little unusual, a little bit fun. Did you all know that there is a career path quiz on the ADA member app? Mm -hmm. It's free to the ADA members. And if you're a student ASDA member, you already have an ADA membership. So you just need to download the app. There you go. Got to do it. Let's do it. So Dr. Effie, Dr. Maestas and I just took the quiz. It's short and easy. We're going to be revealing our results a little later in the episode. Yeah, I'm so curious to hear your results. Yeah, mine were pretty surprising. So I'm super excited to hear everybody's. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, I know, right? (laughs) So Dr. Maestas, let's talk a little bit about your career path. What helped you decide to work at an FQHC? How did you find out about this type of practice? Yeah, thank you for your question. So I grew up in an area where many people didn't have the opportunity to see a dentist, lots of friends and family. And living in a borderline community, many of our our, our friends did take the opportunity when I was growing up to go over into Mexico to get a lot of their treatment done. And so I knew that becoming a dentist for me was to give back to the community that I lived in or a similar community like El Paso. And so before I started dental school, after I had been accepted, I was looking to see what scholarships were available. My dad always said, you know, there's free money out there. You just got to look for it. So I did start looking for it. And I came across the National Health Service Corps scholarship that paid for my schooling and returned to some service in an underserved area. So I got my four years of schooling paid for. I do still have some loans out because dentistry and living on your own is expensive. Sure. And in return, giving some time back at the FQHC. Awesome. And this kind of just fit with my mission and with my why. And it kind of just fit right in. So I didn't really know that this career path was something that would be available to me, Mm -hmm. but through some Google searching, that's kind of how I came across it. And I really enjoy being in public health and serving a community that really doesn't have a whole lot of other places to turn to. Yeah. I love that so much. Isn't it amazing? Mm -hmm. The fact that you had this, first of all, you were smart enough (laughs) to find the free money, right? (laughs) And then the fact that you were able to go back to your community and the surroundings and give back. I mean, this is amazing. You know, many times we think that things happen like by accident, but Mm -hmm. I think in your mind, as you said, you had a mission. Yeah. So you went for this mission. This is great. Mm -hmm. I really like it. 
That's right. Yeah, very well said. And and this is a great opportunity for those who are, are listening to, whether it's the scholarship or loan repayment options. It's a great way to give back to your community and get some loans paid off along the way. Yeah. What's your typical day? We all know about FQHCs, but it's really interesting to understand more about your day. You know, what is the advantage and disadvantage of working in FQHCs? So tell us a little bit more about this. Sure. Yeah. Great question. And no two FQHCs are alike. So I love that every person who you might find in a public health setting, their day may be very different. But typically I work Mondays and Fridays, seven to noon, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, seven to five thirty. And pretty much from when we start to when we end, we have patients kind of coming in and out. I would say predominantly we do a lot of extractions, a lot of removable. Those are two areas that I feel passionate about. Mm-hmm. So I'm pretty content doing those procedures. Same. But we do a, a ton of extractions. And we save where we can, right. but I would say that predominantly we are a large removable clinic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of my day in and day out. I see about two to three patients an hour, depending on what that procedure might look like. But yeah, that's my day in and day out. Wait, did you say that you work Monday and Friday, seven to 12? Like, let's I make everyone guess. jealous who's <laughs> listening to this. Like, that's what I just wrote down. Did, did I hear that correctly? <laughs> I do. Seven, so I work every day, but yes, yeah, seven, seven to noon is when I work. And then Monday afternoons, I'm at the dental school. I was going to ask. Okay. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That was a way for us to balance the schedule. We really should have two dentists at the clinic that I'm at now, but since it's just me, they've asked me to be there every day. And it was a friendly compromise that we were able to meet so I could be at the dental school on Monday afternoons. Awesome. Okay. Yes. Yes. So you go to the dental school as a part-time faculty, obviously yep. only Monday afternoon. What about your Friday? Your Friday free yeah my friend is free that's that's, oh, uh, that's girl, party time well, talk well about balance well, and wellness <laughs> and yes, taking care of yourself yes. like talk about it all oh i'm looking to work less <laughs> sign me up <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well played, well played. Right? So as a faculty, how do you feel going back to dental school? Because this is also giving back to education, right? So you you are a part-time faculty in the dental school. How well connected you are with the setting, with the students, with the other faculty? How do you collaborate? And how did you think of going back to education? Yeah, being what, five years out, right? 2018? Yeah, yes. so for me... Long term wise, I, I'd like to be in education. Being involved in as as a student really connected me with my fellow peers mm-hmm. and students from across the nation. And I, I just found a passion in working with students during my time in dental school. And growing up, I was always told that El Paso would never see a dental school. And during my time in ASA, I connected with a dentist who was the trustee in the ADA who was from El Paso. His name is Dr. Rick Black. Mm -hmm. And we connected actually at a meeting in Chicago. It was a joint ADA ASA meeting. And he told me, hey, dental school is coming to El Paso. Would you like to be a part of it? And I said, 100 percent, yes. And so I knew, you know, since even before graduating dental school and while the dental school here was just a a vision at the time that I wanted to come back and be a part of the dental school and help our community and help those students who are at the dental school now. And so thankfully, they have been very welcoming to me to bring me on as a part time faculty. And they've allowed me to kind of grow in my skill and share the knowledge that I have with the students that are there. And it's great. You know, I'm there. I help in the preclinic if they're there and the clinic if they are. And if they're in classes, I sit in there and and try and grasp some more knowledge that maybe I missed out on in dental school. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's so good. So a couple of curveballs here. In your role as a part-time faculty, I feel like you're also a great mentor. Like you almost have to mentor some of these students who you probably saw on your way out or, you know, you're giving them some hope as well about returning back to the school. Do you get a lot of questions and do you get the opportunity to share your story about how you went into academia, even though it's part-time right now? Do you get to share a little bit of that story with some of your your students. I do. And and hopefully I do serve as a good mentor to these students. They really are like a sponge. They want to learn as much as they can. But I share my story and I I encourage them to consider a career in public health and how rewarding it can be if they're looking for a different option that isn't your typical private practice. Mm -hmm. So I I encourage them to consider doing something outside of the box. And I share with them my story and kind of how I foresee what my future will look like in dentistry. And that's the beauty of dentistry is that you can take different paths and it can change along the way. And I encourage them just to Uh, kind of be open to what those changes might look like. Which is what we're talking about today. And so for everybody who's listening, don't be afraid to share your story because you never know where it will land you. (laughs) 
Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So after discussing and learning so much about FQHCs, it's interesting to go to another career choice. We have with us Dr. Dan Hammer, who practices dentistry in the military, and here is why he loves his career choice. My name is Dan Hammer. I'm an active duty oral maxillofacial surgeon in the U.S. Navy, and I am outside Scripps Mercy here in San Diego, California. And I just want to kind of share about dentistry in a hospital. And of course, as oral maxillofacial surgeons, we spend a lot of time with facial trauma and infections, but dentistry is needed in all hospitals. You could be helping out a cancer patient before they start radiation or chemotherapy or helping a patient with MRONs or osteoarthritic necrosis and doing dental rehabilitation in these really, really difficult patients, but it's so, so rewarding. I was lucky enough to do a GPR. For those of you who are new grads, definitely something that will help you expand your skill set and make you feel comfortable with some of these more challenging cases. It definitely makes me a better dentist by integrating in the overall healthcare network of San Diego and uh, leveraging my talents and learning from the amazing, talented people in the healthcare community. So this is so interesting because he brings up so many different aspects of dentistry, not only the fact that he's in the military. Right. Hospital setting. Correct. Hospital yeah. setting, putting the dentistry in the center of the overall medical care. Mm-hmm. So I think it's really interesting. And I think it's nice when you have the opportunity to work in the hospital and get also this dimension. Mm-hmm. So that's really a, a, a great career choice. Yeah. And I was just going to say, even from that one clip, I feel like our listeners can just garner and just see the many paths that they can take. And hopefully they can also find themselves throughout this conversation that we're having with Dr. Maestas today. Absolutely. And as you all are rock stars, Dr. Hammer's story is really, really awesome. Somebody to definitely Mm -hmm. look into. I think you all will be very impressed at all of his accolades. And a lot of people now, after graduation, try to do first an ADD or a GPI, right? I mean, this gives you a little bit of a different career skill, even for people that then decide to go to specialty. But I think it's really important. I see that a lot of our students at UConn, after graduation, before they make a choice of the specialty that they want to choose or to follow, they, they prefer to go through the experience of, you know, a little bit more adventurous general dentistry. Oh, yeah. Get a little bit more exposure to what your hands are going to be doing, like kind of make that hands connection with with what you're what's already in your mind. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Group practice, FQHC, faculty, which suits you. Find out in a new career path quiz on the ADA member app. Now through June 12th, 2023, quiz takers automatically enter to win great prizes. It's a win-win. See contest rules and download the app at ada.org slash app. Laurel Road is committed to serving the financial needs of doctors, including helping you get the home of your dreams. Laurel Road's Dentist Mortgage is a home loan exclusively for dentists, featuring up to 100% financing on loans of $1 million or less. These loans have fewer restrictions than conventional mortgages. For terms and conditions, please visit www.laurelroad.com forward slash ADA. Laurel Road is a brand of Key Bank North America and an equal housing lender, NMLS number 399797. Dr. Wright, did you do an AGD or GPR? No. And it's funny that you bring that up because I was going to interject and say, I kind of wish that I had done something like that, but life happens. I was actually pregnant in my senior year of dental school. I don't even know how I got through it, but um, I know. Yeah. And and, and we weren't planning. I know. And so I was pregnant with my son. And so I kind of had to just pivot real quick and make sure that I had a job because I'm like, all right, I really have mouths to feed Uh, other than my own, but I was able to learn. I did a whole bunch of continuing education and I still do to this day just so that I can stay fresh and with the times. But yeah, that's one thing if I could have, that's one thing that I would have done. It's never too late. You know that, right? You know, I, 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 you know, it isn't too late, but I think about it. I'm just like, okay, so what would I be doing? Would I be wasting my time? So now I'm really conscious of how I manage my time and how I use my time, or I should say invest it. So I think about it all the time. And if I would be that one person that's kind of disrupting the flow of learning for other people who are fresh and who haven't been in the practice setting, you know what I mean? So I'm like six years out. I've thought about it though, but not right now. Yeah. Maybe you can think about the specialty. Ooh. Oh, you know, 
I, yeah, I have yeah, thought sure. about a specialty, to be honest. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that. <laughs> so, well, we touched on academia already. Let's talk about that career path. Dr. Effie, why did you choose academia? What's a typical day like for you? It's so complicated. It's exactly what we said that sometimes life happens. So they, you know, I was in private practice. I spent a few years out there, not in the U.S., back in Greece. Yeah. Things happen in personal level. We were relocated here and it was a very nice coincidence to be recruited at the Yukon Dental School. And I started from a fully clinical appointment, full time. Most of my time was devoted to the clinics. Okay. And as Time went by, shifted a little bit at more towards research. So there is no typical day first for in academics, right? Always there is there is always something unpredictable. The same thing that happens in practice, right? Okay. There is no typical day. There is always something that will shake up yeah, a yeah. little bit, the spice up your day. Yep. So now I lead the Department of Periodontology at the University of Connecticut. So there are a lot of things with faculty, with students. It's a complete fluidity during the day. So it can be from, you know, there are days that are super calm and you can really sit down in your desk and complete the paper that you are writing. And there are days that you start a sentence and you will never finish this sentence for, you know, in eight hours. Mm -hmm. There are so many meetings, so many things happening. And, you know, we have our podcast, we have our service to the ADA, organized (laughs) industry, right? I volunteer my time to other organizations like the American Association for Dental, Oral and Craniofacial Research, the ADOCR. So there are so many things during the day, right? So, yeah, that's so that's why I like I like academia because it's very unpredictable and keeps me young. <laughs> keeps me young. You blend right in with the students, Dr. Effie. Yes, that's right. There you go. There's a statement that I, I think both of you can attack in this moment, and I kind of think it should be done away with. And this is another curveball. You guys know I'm good for that. But it says those who can do and those who can't, they teach. So I want to know what you guys' reaction is to that. And I, I, I'm, I'm going to start, actually, because one of the things, so I love academia. I love teaching. I was actually a science teacher before I went into dentistry, right? And when I heard that statement, I, I almost makes me feel like, oh, I want to be ashamed of the fact that I like to educate because then with this statement out there, people will think that I can't perform clinically. So I want to know you guys' thoughts about that statement. I I have an alternative statement. The one that says, you see one, you do one, you teach one. There you go. Okay. (laughs) Okay. I think that wraps it up really, really well. There you go. I I think so. Yeah. (laughs) Really, really good. I don't think you can beat that with a, that's a great rebuttal. So yeah, Yeah. I'm I'm just going to say ditto. Yeah, I'm going to use that actually. (laughs) So, well, tell us, what is it that you enjoy the most? And if you could change anything, what would you change about a typical day? And Dr. Maestas, you, you can answer this too. The thing that I find very rewarding in academia is that I feel that I'm a part of very large community that kind of is synced all the time. So what what do I mean when I say this? I have so many friends and collaborators in so many different schools, like, you know, in Texas, in California, in Kentucky, in Florida, right? And it's so (laughs) nice to share experiences, learn from each other, collaborate. You don't feel that you are restricted in very narrow local institution. You feel like you are kind of a citizen of the world of academics, right? So this freedom and this open communication is something that excites me. And that's one of the most exciting things, I think, in academia. That I didn't have in private practice. I didn't have. Other people might. But I felt like I was, you know, in my own really solo, small practice in my own world. Yeah, yeah. I don't have this feeling in academics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very well said, Dr. Effie. You know, I I love the questions that the students bring in, in the realm of academics. I think that being at an FQHC is rewarding and challenging in a lot of ways. You know, it's rewarding because you're providing a service to those who may not have anywhere else to turn. And, you know, you you get to build a bond with patients in the community that you're in. But it can be very, very busy. And unfortunately, since I am the only dentist out there, the wait times, I mean, they're long. Right now, I mean, we're booked out to the end of the year. Wow. We're really booked out. It's really, really saturated. So it's we're we're overworked for sure. So I, I would say that if I could change anything, I wish that we had more help in the community to provide the care that's needed. Yeah, that's interesting. 
You're both younger than me. And when I started my career, we discussed this with Arnel before. Things were very difficult or more difficult for women in the workforce, right? You are in a, a different generation. How do you see, is there any flexibility for you, Tanya, mm-hmm. in the setting of the FQAC? Th- say that you, you know, you want to start a family or say that you want to develop as a dentist. How do you see this? So our audience understand a little bit more about the work-life balance. Right. So like like I mentioned earlier, no two FQHCs are the same. Yes. But for me, I would say that when I do get to that point where I'm I'm ready to start a family, I think that they would give me that flexibility to do so. But they are very open to me taking CE courses. I think that they have been very generous to me to go ahead and, you know, go out and with the commitments that I have and the leadership roles that I'm very passionate about, they're very generous in allowing me to do that. That's great. And take some days away from the clinic to go ahead and go out and and travel and and be a leader. So I, I have felt that flexibility there. Uh, would we like more flexibility? Of course. Right. <laughs> right? But I, I, <laughs> I think that maybe that'll come with time. Yeah. And it's really nice because they have the understanding, which is great. The understanding that if they allow you to do this, to be a leader, this basically reflects back on them, right? Because they can be proud of you. You took the words out of my mouth. I was literally going to say, I feel like there is just this understanding that we're starting to see in the world. And especially with like the rise of social media and businesses starting to utilize social media. And I I, I feel like at leverage it to their advantage. It only helps them when you become better because you're pretty much a representative of them when you're not in the practice. And so I think you add value to them by being even better. You know what I mean? And so I just feel like companies are starting to realize that, or maybe they are always have, but maybe employees, like in our case, we're starting to talk about it a little bit more and it's a growing kind of thing, right? Yeah, Dr. Wright, that's a great point. And one thing that I struggle with, even when I'm away from the clinic, although they, you know, they give me that time is that that guilt, I still feel guilty at not being at work. It's it's really hard to manage that sometimes and to leave work at work and not have that in the back of your mind. So that can still be difficult. Hopefully they think that way. And I haven't heard any complaints yet, but it's definitely something that kind of, (laughs) we'll find out after this podcast. Yeah, (laughs) I know, right? (laughs) They'll be Uh, reaching out. (laughs) Uh, Well, hospital dentistry is an exciting career as well. Here's Dr. Rob Margolin telling us a little bit about what his days are like. Hi, my name is Rob Margolin. I'm currently a general practice residency director for a hospital in New York City. I didn't choose hospital dentistry so much as a great opportunity presented itself, and I chose to take it about 20 years ago. I've never looked back, and I've never been happier in my dental career. Some of the things I like about hospital dentistry... It gives me the ability to work with and treat an underserved and diverse patient population. I have a great sense of camaraderie working with other dental specialists and my medical colleagues working to optimize our patients for dental care. And the part I like the best is the opportunity to work with young dental residents as they begin their dental journey. Typical day for me is usually lecture, combination of seeing patients, varying degrees of medical and dental complexity with the dental residents, and also time for administrative duties. I'm sure it's very exciting to be in a hospital setting in New York. Oh, yeah. Wow. I feel like from a hospital perspective, what I love just hearing these stories is it's like, you know how some people when they're like they're general physicians or whatever, they are like, okay, well, you're just a dentist. You know, that whole thing that is like that statement, you're just a dentist. And I feel like in the hospital setting, you may be regarded as more than just a dentist, that word in front of our careers. You know what I mean? So it sounds really, really fun to get to do. And it sounds like he also gets to give back and teach and do some of the same things that both of you guys are doing. You made a very good point. You're just a dentist until they have a dental problem. This right? is and then true. you become a doctor. I think you're good about having some good rebuttals. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you have some great rebuttals. Dr. Effie, we're going to take you on some debates. I really know, good, right? really good. <laughs> You're quick on your feet. <laughs> no, but isn't it true? Yeah. Isn't it true? This is like, true. Yeah, I, my research for quite some time was and still is on kidney disease and the periodontal status of patients, especially when they go on dialysis. So I remember when we first started this project, maybe more than 10 years ago, the nephrologists were so suspicious. Issues like, eh, is this an issue? Yeah. 
But the more we were educating them and the more they saw in their patient's eyes the appreciation that the patients are getting now an exam on the dialysis chair. Some of them were getting a cleaning during dialysis. So they were, oh, wow. hmm, that's that's a good service. These people know what they are doing. Yeah. So yeah, I completely get it. And I know that there is a moment that this culture will completely shift. I hope so. I, I would say that I've definitely heard that sentiment said several times. Yeah. Are you all ready to reveal your results from the career path quiz? Yes. I am eager to hear Dr. Wright's results. Me too. Me too. Because she said she was surprised. I actually am not in this practice setting, but I feel that as I continue to grow in dentistry, I will eventually be in this setting. And so drum roll, please. Ooh. My primary was to be in a small group setting. I'm a very collaborative thinker. And so that was actually the result that came about. And I was like, ah, I can see how that, that definitely describes me as a provider. I love to like pick someone else's brain, or I like to present a situation and share, even if it's a pitfall, like I don't really have a lot of like embarrassment about if I don't know something, something off bat, especially if there's someone who's more seasoned than I, like I know that there's only so much exposure that I'll have at certain stages of my career. And so to see that the quiz recommended or said that I would be in a small group setting, I was like, okay, yeah, that, that would definitely be really, really like, that's accurate. It describes me very well. <laughs> I like it. So what about, what about y'all's? Let's see, who's going to go next? We're going to say Dr. Effie. <laughs> Mine was relatively surprising. The primary was hospital dentist and the, a little bit down the list was the dental faculty. Okay. So yeah, I mean, not very surprising, but I guess some of the answers were capturing both, I, I think, education and hospital setting, which is the reality of the matter. I mean, Yukon Dental School is one of the few schools in a health center. So mm -hmm. yeah, we are, we practice in a hospital setting and we, and I'm a dental faculty. So yeah. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. All right. Tony Sue, you're up. Yeah, I, so I got dentists in federal settings and the additional recommendations were dental faculty and FQHC. Makes oh sense. my so God. It, 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 yeah, hit it right on the head there. Right. No, no surprises there. I was hoping for a big twist, but. So yeah. this is great. Yeah. This means that the test is validated by the three of us. <laughs> there we so go. That's great. We validated <laughs> yeah, that's the right. test. This Statistically, is a very that's probably a good sign. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scientifically, yeah. And so if our audience wants to take the test, we will add the link in the show notes so you can download the ADA member app. Yeah, there's lots of great information in that app, aside from the career test. I agree with that, too. On the next Dental Sound Bites. Our Career Pathways conversation continues. We're looking at how to navigate the dental practice market. From buying your own practice to joining a DSO, you will hear from dentists who have gone through it and learn more about the ins and outs of this career pathway in dentistry. That's on the next episode of Dental Sound Bites. Well, this has been such a phenomenal episode. I feel like we got to learn a lot about you, Dr. Maesta. So before you go, can you tell all of our listeners where to find you a little bit about some of the fun activities that you have going on? You know, such an honor to be here with you all. And you can find me on the gram. Like most millennial dentists, we're on Instagram at tsmaestas.dds. I also started a podcast, New Dentists on the Block. Ooh, ooh. So if you are a new dentist and you'd like to be on the podcast, oh. or if you have some information that you'd like to share with new dentists, please let me know. Awesome. It's a great way to continue to build connections, which I, I believe that you all are doing as well with your podcast. So congratulations to you all as well. And is this something that you do Friday afternoon? <laughs> there we yeah. go. <laughs> actually, I don't. You know, for wellness, I actually don't book anything on Fridays. I try and do it during the week and I try to do it during lunch when I can. Well oh, done. That's amazing. Well done. So thank you once again, Dr. Tanya Sue Maestas for being here with us today. We are so excited that you were able to join us. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. And if you like this episode, go ahead and share it with your friends and colleagues. Subscribe to this podcast wherever you are listening so you can get the latest episodes. And don't forget, the conversation will continue on the ADA member app. Bonus content, what you didn't hear on the show. Thank you for joining us. Dental Soundbites is an American Dental Association podcast. You can also find this show, resources, and more on the ADA member app and online at ada.org slash podcast.